Let's have a look at the Fuso starting grid for race number 33 of this championship. And Fabian Coulthard, who leaps away his third pole of 2013. Jason Bright alongside him. He's had two race wins this year. Mark Winterbottom's got great car speed at Phillip Island this weekend. Jamie Wincup is the championship leader. Chas Mostert, the winner at Queensland Raceway. Then it's Shane Van Gisbergen will be next in the queue. The Clipsal 500 winner of 2013. David Wall, Brad Jones Racing, the third car of that group inside the top ten. Fantastic job. Second man in the championship, Craig Lowndes. Then it's Alex Davison on the podium yesterday. Davey Reynolds has had some problems with right rear punctures this weekend. And Scott Pye, an excellent performance for the event sponsor, Sergeant Security. Michael Caruso, the best of the Nissans. There's Will Davison, fourth in the championship. Garth Tander, yesterday's race winner. Team High Flex at Tony D'Alberto. And Todd Kelly, the Jack Daniels Racing Nissan Altima has Rick Kelly behind him with Tim Blanchard. That qualifying session didn't go as well as the start to his weekend, but look out for Tim. He's on a good roll. Russell Ingle farewells Philip Island this weekend after all these years. Jonathan Webb in the Darrell Lee Techno entry. Position 23 for Scott McLaughlin, 24 for the German Murro Engel. And the last two spots on the grid go to Tim Slade and Dean Fiore, James Courtney and Alex Premer have both headed home, their cars so severely damaged in that huge crash yesterday down at Turn 4. There with Kelly. 17th on the grid. There's Chaz Mostert. Chaz is going to start out of position number 5. That's a very good qualifying performance by Chaz. This is a very, very fast circuit. One of the most difficult to do a really good lap of. And Chaz has been very fast this weekend. Dave Reynolds, we've seen some right-hand rear drama with the tyre deflation and puncture. And we found out a little bit more about that. The rear camber is what the guys are saying within the team. We're on board there with Russell Engel and now Scott McLaughlin. So we've got so much of the field covered for you. Scott at the back of the field today. He's not happy with the car in qualifying. And as we just indicated, Alex Premer from that massive crash yesterday will not be lining up. Jamie Winkup in P4 alongside Winterbottom. This is very, very crucial. Quick shout out. James Courtney will be watching at home. Won't want to be doing that. Same too for Alex Primer, but more importantly, great friend of the industry, noted journalist John Evans. He's not well at the moment. We know that he's watching. We love having him in the paddock. He's a great professional, a great mate, and a great bloke, and we wish you the best, John. We want to see you back here very soon. 100% one of the leading automotive journalists in around our sport for a long time, so all the very best. Use the hashtag V8SC if you'd like to join our Twitter conversation today. The official account for V8 Supercars, at V8 Supercars. Live on 7 Sport right around Australia and themed also across the globe. This incredible championship of 2013, unlike anything we've had before. 17 different race winners, 13 of those the full-timers, so four coming through the Enduro events. Five rookie winners this season, nine different teams. And now this championship battle that Got is providing now. story after story. Good, bad and in between. And great flag, great flag. How are they going to play this one? 100 kilometres, 23 laps at this awesome racing circuit. Coulthard and Bright on the front row, but the championship contenders, wow. Winterbottom and Winkup on the second row. They're going to have to go around Jason Bright for the second day in a row, and they do so. So Coulthard holding his own. Look at Chas Mostert. Four wide into turn one. There will be drama, and there is. Winterbottom gets a touch. He's straight off the Norton Hornet. I think that may have been Moffat because there's Caruso. So it was Moffat out. Off the road at one. Frosty was really beaten and battered going into turn one there, and they're all on the radio offering personal references. So Winkup has the lead from Mostert, Lowndes up to third, then Van Gisberg, and there is Winterbottom on the outside at turn four. So he's dropped back to about sixth, possibly seventh. Wright's just tumbled down the order after that start. Look where he's battling at the moment. He's with David Wall, his teammate, and Michael Caruso from the front row of the grid. He's going to lose another spot here. That was insane. Oh. Absolutely insane. The 
big winner is the championship leader. The big loser is Mark Winterbottom. And of course, Jason Bright. And they'll four abreast at one of Australia's fastest corners. Down the inside now, Davison on Caruso. No contact, but this is where he was spun yesterday. So win cup, what a first lap from P4 to the lead. Most it from the third row of the grid into position two and threatening. So where does Winterbottom end up after lap one? He's in eighth. And but Bright from position two has dropped down to position 10. So that's going to make it a long race and a long afternoon for him. And Lowndes from eighth to third. Todd Ooh, Kelly off the road. Here. He's got to climb back on and gather it up because it's actually quite difficult to stop at turn two there once you've toured the grass and the tyres will be wet when they come back on. He did a really good job to control the car then. Lowndes now on Mostert inside of turn four. It makes it a little awkward when he gets down to Siberia. Puts him on the outside of the road. Mostert knows that. And he's got the edge as they turn left. Jamie will be hoping that Craig puts enough pressure on Mostert to keep him away to allow Jamie a little bit of breathing space. We've heard all weekend, but they're not really satisfied with the car balance and the performance of the cars this weekend so far. On board there with Lowndes through the hay shed. Winterbottom's got his hands full at the moment with David Reynolds, who in turn is fending off Garth Tan and Lowndes down the inside. Good move. And Dunn Van Gisbergen tries to buy in oh. two, side by side to the left-hander. Oh, they're crossed up. Lowndes is out in the dirty grey stuff here. Watch for Van Gisbergen on the inside because he'll gain from all of this, and he has. That is Coulthard. That was very close. Coulthard almost gave Mostert a hit. And that's Jeremy Moore. Just be patient. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Obviously, uh, no rules apply again. So no rules apply is what Craig Lowndes has just said to Jeremy. So he's still blowing about the racing room. And that was a pretty close moment as he ran wide with Mostert around the inside. So now he's just going to compose himself, take a deep breath, get organised, and go and pluck a position one at a time, Fabian Coulthard, the next one in the queue. So from third to fifth for Lowndes, up the inside again now of Coulthard at turn four. That gap closes off, though, as you get a little further around the corner. Be careful. Yeah. Well, he's had two goes at that now, and it takes nothing for the turn damage. in for steering damage. Exactly. Bad start. Check right out there from the front row. He went down to tenth. And have a look at this at the first corner. So Mostert's down the inside of Coulthard, being pushed by Van Gisbergen. Contact there, and Van Gisbergen and Winterbottom make wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. The original contact for Winterbottom came with Chaz Mostert. And at one stage there, they were in danger of being five wide going down, as Shane Van Gisbergen had a look. How they stayed on the road, I do not know. This is on board from Craig Lowndes' view. Watch this. He'd be thinking, you're joking. <laughs> Oh. So, that, as Shane went to the right, he almost ended up turning across the front. And remember, they're on stone-cold tyres. They've got no grip at all when they arrive down there at Turn 1. Here's the replay of what happened to Lowndes, third to fifth in one manoeuvre at Van Gisberg and the beneficiary. Well, the door opened for him at Turn 1, but it closed pretty hard at Turn 10, didn't it? It was a manoeuvre that he was trying to put on young Chas Mostert. One of the rookies had five different rookie winners this year. Most has done a great job. Lowndes was down the inside. And this is on board now with Lowndes on the rev limiter, so the tailwind there. And he's going to have another go at this. He's got his third tour of this. He's got him a little wider this time. He might get away with it, and he'll try and feed him across to the left to close off the gap, but he's still not there. There's still a ton and a half of Holden underneath Craig Lowndes, and he's vulnerable now to Alex Davison in the forward. He's got more pace at the moment, Lowndes, but he's going to have to patiently apply it. This is wild. This is one of the fastest corners on our tour. The Hay Shed, turn eight. 240 kilometres an hour on the exit of it. They were right alongside it. He's going to have another go down here at MG. I think you'll get it done this time, and it'll be helped by Alex Davison. So that's back to position four now. 
Craig Lowndes, Alex Davison. Now, Winterbottom's got to try and get a wriggle on here somehow as well to get back into this battle. The man that he's racing in the championship, Win Cup, is the leader. Win Cup first, Van Gisbergen, Mostert, Lowndes, Coulthard, Davison, Winterbottom seventh. Will Davison, fourth in the championship, is 11. Watch for Davison here, because this is a pretty lively manoeuvre. A way out of one. Fabian struggling. Didn't yes. The car wasn't turning at all through one. Now you can see how much extra road he needed to get through turn one. Alex Davison was able to position the Falcon pretty much where he wanted to. Mark Winterbottom now, right up in behind Davison. Look how Lowndes has skipped away once he got some fresh air there. This is uh, Mark Winterbottom. This is Siberia. And this great run. This is turn eight up here. A little left hand kink. Is it flat? Fifth gear. Is it? No. In and fact, a long way from it. Quite a feather. And tailwind. The, it, tailwind and also right behind the other car. So the aero effect of Alex Davison takes the front grip away from the car behind. for the throttle. Gear change to change direction. Gentle modulation there, wheel spin. And he's going to be asking for position here, Mark Winterbottom. Remember, these two headbutted each other in New Zealand at Pukekohe. So Wind Cup's the leader. Van Gisbergen, Mostert, Lowndes, Coulthard, Davison we're looking at on screen and we're riding with Winterbottom. More to play. The man who's laughing at the ball is the champ. He's the points leader and Wing Cup has 1.8 seconds back to this fight. Shane Van Gisbergen and Chaz Mostert. Don't forget, while Chaz Mostert drives for Dick Johnson's team, he is a contracted Ford Performance Racing driver. So effectively, there's five FPR influence cars out there. There's no way he was going to not have a rumble with Lowndes there. And he held his ground and he holds position number three. Lowndes is fourth. Then Coulthard, who starting to back them up. Alex Davison, Winterbottom, Tander, Reynolds, Jason Bright from the front row back to 10th. Then Will Davison, Pye, Caruso, Delberto, David Wall, all 26 cars on the lead lap. Tim Slade rounding out the field after what's been a miserable weekend in the HHA. Mercedes-Benz from the Erebus team. And Lowndes just starting to chip away here on Mostert. He's taken six tenths to the second sector. He's dropped off Fabian Coulthard quite comfortably. Remember that Coulthard is position five in the championship. Best of the rest outside of Red Bull and Ford Performance Racing. There's Bright closing in, sticking with Reynolds and Tander. And remember that Tander won the race yesterday, but throttle problems in qualifying meant very limited running. But he's moved up 14th to 8th after what was an unbelievably wild turn one. It's quite amazing that none of those cars ended up off the road. They were four wide at one stage, quite amazing. Remember, there's 100 points on the line for the winner of this race. It's a 23 lapper. So you've got to look after the tyres. Remember, new generation of car this year, bigger tyre, resurfaced racetrack. So we are going into the unknown. Just a little bit here, Lowndes is closing in on Chas Mostert. This is critical. He stays in the game here with his teammate because Wink Up really stands to gain. What a sight as these V8 supercars roar around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Jamie Wink Cup's doing it the best at the moment. He leads by 2.4 seconds over Shane Van Gisbergen. And that's the pack we're looking at. Chaz Mostert in third. Lowndes tucked in behind him in fourth, Fabian Coulthard from pole to fifth. We, Neil and I were just laughing in the break because Chaz will be very encouraged to get by Van Gisbergen because when Lowndes gets back to him, it'll be the wave. Remember me? We had that little driver a couple of laps ago. It's got a run. Good run. Very good run. A little bit wide there for Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen will leave it on the right-hand side of the road and make Chaz 
do the hard yards to get down the inside. It's not really a passing spot, especially when there's a headwind which reduces the braking area. How's the oversteer? The body language and the slide is just fantastic. This is why this place is the best permanent racetrack of the lot. Big, fast, European-style corners, 210 kilometres an hour, then when we watched Van Gisbergen oversteer his way through turn one. When you focus on the rear of Shane's car, you can see how busy he is. In fact, Mozda was busy then. At turn three, it wagged its tail. That's a big incentive for Lowndes. It had a big slide as he tried to pull it up and then get it organised for turn four. And Lowndes is getting that royal wave ready. He's the king of the Morse code, isn't he? he just give you a bump, another bump, another bump, another bump. So the proximity of Lowndes has just diverted the attention of Mostert for a moment to give him a little bit of a breather, Van Gisbergen. But look at this. They've tightened up again over the top of Lukey Heights. In the background, Garth Tander was two abreast through the hay shed. Just make sure we find him in the background. That was with Bright. And Bright got him yep. in that move. There they are. Now yeah, Mostert was very strong onto the straight last time through. There's Pye as well. He's 12th at the moment. He hasn't quite got the ground that he had in the previous lap this time, Mostert, and Lowndes has lost a little bit through the top section. And you've got to time the run because the aero effect is, it hurts you in the corner, but good in the straight. Oh, that is as close, 285 kilometers an hour. That's as close as you ever get to making contact. We saw Ben Gisbergen and Davison have drama there last year. Did you see when we were on board there before with Chaz, the wiper on that thing, lifting off it at high speed? Lucky there's no water around at the moment. Guys, Fabian Coulthard uh, just reporting some understeer Brad Jones at the moment. You're working with it? Yeah, he's, uh, he's a little unhappy, I think, in the car. He's not really saying too much at the moment. So these three in front look like they're putting on a ding-dong die. So hopefully they can, uh, they, can, they can drag themselves back towards Fabian a little bit. But, you know, after having two cars on the front row, it's a bit disappointing not to have one of them up there. But I think for Bridie, back in the pack, you end up with so much aero push that it's hard to compete against it. Thanks, Brad. Good luck. Thank you. Austin had a very serious nibble then trying to get underneath the VIP Pet Foods entry. Oh, that was Lowndes. That was speedway action. That was about 220 kilometres an hour right out sideways. You've got to be careful because you don't want to hurt the rear tyre too much. It superheats the surface temperature of the tyre and it takes a third of a lap or more, half a lap to recover if you do too much of that. Now, Mostert's better positioned this time, so watch his run through the final corner. He picked up the throttle early two laps ago. Let's listen and look. He's shallow and into it hard. He's got a good corner exit speed. There's that wiper I spoke about before, just waving to the crowd. He's got to get it He's across. He's got to run. He's got to run. He's got to run. Oh, and Van Gisbergenstein has a little check sideways just as he turns it in. That's an awkward feeling, and remember that the car following is disturbing the aero on the preceding car. That's one of the reasons why Shane's car is misbehaving down there. You can feel look it. Look oh, 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 What a catch. Oh, on board, have a look. Have a look at the oversteer. Check the steering. He did, it, he did it on the curbing, and the slowest speed through there is 200 kilometres an hour. The slowest speed. Be, Lowndes will be looking at these two because they're very brave, Mostert and Van Gisbergen. Last lap, as Neil said, Mostert almost got down the inside at Siberia. Lowndes will be looking saying, these boys play for keeps here, this is serious. And all this is good news for Wing Cup up ahead, who's now 4.2 seconds clear. The longer these three fight, the better it is for the race leader. Scafie, that's a great observation. So you lounge you in a championship hunt. Tell, tell me two guys you wouldn't want in front of you to try and get past. <laughs> there they are right there. Look, here we go again. But what's really important here, all the drivers go home and watch these telecasts. And Chas Mostert, he's indifferent. He doesn't care who it is. Lounge, wink up, Van Gisbergen. He'll take you. And I just think he's telegraphing that message to everyone. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's a very good performance, Larko. This is the spot. He's going to do it again. Look, oh, look, big look, slide look. then. That, that might be it. No, he actually lost ground because the aero effect on Mostert's car. And, and he's look. actually vulnerable to Lowndes. Lowndes could round him up here in this move. So Chaz was affected by Shane having to check up mid-corner. Oh, they all drop back into the queue, but they're playing serious games here for keeps at the moment. And Mostert nearly ran out of road on the exit of one. 
He was a winner here in Formula Ford back in 09, but because there's no Dunlop series driving here, he's had next to no exposure other than years ago. So he's doing a brilliant job. He's holding off the all-time race winner in this sport, but down at turn he's four, he's gone wide. Good job. Lowndes will go through. So after all that tapping and all that telegraphing, Lowndes gets it done cleanly and moves up to third. What a battle it's been in the first 10 laps of this race. It's been nothing but plain sailing, though, for the championship leader, Wing Cup, leads by five seconds. Now, what can Lowndes do about Van Gisbergen? He's got a bit of ground to make. He's got a second as they flow on through. Approaching half race distance, lap 11 of 23. We jump aboard with Mark Winterbottom. He is in position seven at the moment. He started from third and he's probably a little bit lucky because he could have very easily had damage from that first corner multi-car contact. Alex Davison in front. And Fabian Coulthard just been able to start to hang on and keep those guys behind in check. That time through, wink up a 33-3. Van Gisbergen 33-8, Lowndes 34-2. Remember, there was a move being made on that lap. Most at 34-4. Coulthard is in the 33, so his comparative pace is all right versus Van Gisbergen, for instance, but his track position is the issue. And this is the look back from Lowndes to Mostert. We'll see Mostert move to the Pepsi Max crew next year. He'll take over. Car number six, Will Davison, will depart that squad at the end of Sydney in a fortnight's time. But these guys are just starting to come back to Coulthard and Alex Davison and Winterbottom. Just as Brad Jones said earlier, they're just starting to fade back a little bit. So this could be tightening up before you know it. There's Bright, eighth, Reynolds, ninth. Big Congo line of cars. Best Nissan, Michael Caruso. He's done a really good job in the second half of the year. He's 13th at the moment. Best of the Erebus run Mercedes is a long way back. Lee Holdsworth is position 20. They've struggled this weekend, but there's the margin that Wink Cup's got. He's got this one in control. 5.6 seconds is the margin. Back to Shane Van Gisbergen. Scott McLaughlin there looking at Holdsworth, Moffat, Webb, Slade, Maro Engel, Dean Fiore is tailing Charlie in the Dodo Insurance Commodore position 26. Well, there's Wink Cup 33 4 that time through, pulling away, doing it comfortably. Nice cushion for him to drive on into the second half of this race, but now Lowndes is going hunting. He's right on the back of the Kiwi in the VIP Pet Foods Commodore. Sergeant Security, Phillip Island, 360, sees Jamie Winkup leading by almost six seconds now, but Craig Lowndes got slots him. into second. So he's got past Mostert, now he's got past Van Gisbergen. The next man he's got to try and hunt down over the next 10 laps is his teammate. It looked as though Shane got it stopped, but then in the mid corner it pushed wide. Yeah. So it was delayed getting the throttle on Craig, just easily sliced him then and went by. But what you'll find too now, Neil, that the his wing cup, that's the gap back to his teammate now in P2. But what you'll find is the tyre condition now starting to get knocked around halfway through this race effectively. And we will see cars in the final part of this race have a much different uh, methodology of keeping that speed, keeping the flow it's Moffat off the road at Lukey Heights because the tyre condition, this is the hardest place in Australia on tyres. And the last part is always difficult. So what they want to do with Wing Cup is actually slow him up. They want to just read the race and drive the car as slow as you possibly can to maintain that gap over Craig. Probably an opportune time to grab a quick word with Roland Dane. Uh, looks like that's him. Yep, he's stopped. Roll. Yeah, hell, we might get a safety car here. These guys are going to be onto this. Just bear with us. So that's Caruso parked in the paddock, and we saw his teammate Moffat off at the top of Lukey Heights. And this, depending on the view of the race director, is a long way yeah. from the racetrack. Oh, but it is so fast. Stopped, uh, turn 
There you go. Safety car will be deployed. It's an oil pressure issue, I, I hear, for Caruso. So he just pulls wide to try and stay out of everyone's way. Oh, and McLaughlin. Oh, OK, so it was ah. Scott, Scott took James... Scott McLaughlin took James Moffat off, and that was an avoiding action for James. So that was the reason why we saw the first of the Nissan Hornets out there as Caruso does open heart surgery on his car. The safety car is out. We're back here at Phillip Island in a tick. And that's drama for Caruso. He's actually come off a couple of top 10 results in the 36 Nissan Ultima. But some mechanical dramas at the Enduros on the Gold Coast and at Bathurst have really hurt him so that margin that wing cup had is gone 6.1 seconds at one stage craig lounge scores the free bus ride up to the back of his teammate as they'll line up behind the petters stp chrysler safety car so we close it all in 20 seconds covered the top 15 and in fact 14 covered the top 10 so this will spice it this will leave us with a sprint to the line so who's looked after their rubber who's got something left for that last run home we will see. So it's Wing Cup Lounge, Van Gisbergen, Mostert, Coulthard, Alex Davison, Winterbottom, Bright, Reynolds, Tanner. That's top 10 and of the championship contenders. Will Davison is 11th and starting to slip out of the picture. That is Craig Lounds. Eight times a race winner here. More than any other active driver in the V8 Supercars Championship. And trying to keep some heat into the Dunlops. He has the fastest lap of this race, a 132.89 is half a second away from the times he ran yesterday, but he's the only man to lap in 132s. Uh, I think it was the Rock Age. Just hearing some radio chat there. I think that was a reference to Van Gisbergen. Everyone's had time now to slow down and have a bit of a debrief with their engineer, have a little bit of think about things. There's Mark Winterbottom. He runs in seventh, and as it sits, he'll give away points. Wink up if he stays where he is. That's worth 100. Second is worth 92. Third is worth 86. Fourth is worth 80. Where Winterbottom is in seventh, he's only worth 64. So he's going to give away ground unless he can start to work his way through under safety car at Phillip Island. The last time we saw car 36, Michael Caruso was doing some DIY mechanics. He's decided to just call in the help as the Nissan Altima is dragged away and the Petters STP safety car is in control of the field. So that condenses, of course, that lead that Jamie Wincup had. It was out to six seconds. He was at the stage of having his own party out there. He can have his cake and eat it too, but now it's like a giant cupcake that Lowndes just wants to take away from him. Marco? Yeah, sorry, mate, I interrupted before, just as we'll be out to get a safety car rolling. I uh, hope you can chat now. Um, it's been an up-and-down weekend at this stage, but you've managed to get your cars back up the front one too. That's championship stuff, and I, li I like seeing that. But how do you manage that from here, mate? Because you know yourself, Craig's lap time's a little faster than, uh, than Jamie's. Um, drivers racing each other are typically slower than the field. Uh, how do you manage this now? Oh, look, you've got to leave it to their common sense, I hope, that they're not going to trip over each other. And uh, if one's quicker than the other, then he's got to race for it. But at the end of the day, I just don't want them to trip over each other. But, yeah, it's racing. Anything, anything can happen. We could be back up in the stewards' room later. Who knows? <laughs> it, it has been a tough weekend in terms of stewards. In terms of also, and we've still got Sydney to go. And I can know, I know you guys, you're not going to rest on your laurels. But this has been a particularly tough weekend. What do you put it down to? Oh, yeah, I mean, first time we've been to Phillip Island since it with uh, these cars. Uh, resurfaced as well, new tyre, you know, a lot of variables. And it's very windy this morning as well in that first uh, practice, sorry, qualifying session. Yep. Caught us out a little bit. Yeah, there's plenty going on and um, it's a great racetrack to be out there. Certainly is. Now, just while you stand aside, you don't do much here. These blokes do all the work. Mark Dutton and Jeremy Moore, the two young engineers, tune in to V8 Extra next Saturday because we have a bit of a closer look at what these guys do behind the scenes. Very interesting. Yeah, and also coming up, Larko, uh, Neil Crompton has done a one-on-one -on -one interview with Roland Dane. And it's a fascinating chat on just how he manages these very situations. How do you manage the teammates and tread that fine line between letting them race as individuals but knowing that there is a team factor to this sport? It's a really incredible chat, and that's coming up after this race. You just, it's just bizarre, isn't it, boys? This is going to go right down to Sydney 500. 
let's not forget that Jamie Wincup is yet to be on the podium at Sydney Olympic Park. So the nerves that are bubbling along at this stage yeah, of this race keep them going. They're going to go for another couple of weeks. No doubt, Matt. I can't wait for it. We've seen some dramatic racing at Sydney, but right now, this restart, normally the tricks between teammates are known. You know that in the truck, when you talk about a restart and what you might do in terms of the technique, all that chat is pretty much closed shop. So when you try to do that to your competitor, it's all fine if you've got Mark Winterbottom or Will Davison or Shane Van Gisbergen. But when your teammates are like this, this will be an interesting restart because you don't get the same freebie. You don't get the little jump or the little kick that you might get. So Craig's got to make sure at this restart that he's right behind Wink Up. And don't be fooled by the fact that they're wearing the same colour overalls. Because they both want to win. Oh, yeah. That's the point to that. Cup gets away on a flyer. He's done the job well. But Lowndes got a great run. So the first part of the restart was very good for Wing Cup, but the second part through the corner itself was very good for Lowndes. And it needed to be because Van Gisbergen went with him and was threatening. Cold tyres. I noticed both the Red Bull drivers worked really hard in that gap to make sure that they tried to keep brake temperature and tyre pressure up, and that's Tony Delberto in the high flex hold. The problem with that car slowed right down, I imagine, for someone to inspect it as it went by, so he must be concerned he needed a visual on it. Mostert's very close to the back of Van Gisbergen. And there's Mark Winterbottom, car five, just in front of Jason Bright, who's recovered a couple of spots. Remember, he started on the front row, he went back to 10th, and that was Davison off wide, Tander and Davison getting together again. Scott Pye, car number eight, he's in 12th place in the red car. Here's Lowndes, right on the back of his teammate through Hayshed. This is where Lowndes had the big wobble several laps ago. Much more stability through there this time. Sometimes the tyres can recover a little bit after a rest. He's on him, he's going to have a run, he'll have a look. He had momentum but had to get out of it on the grey. So Lowndes is hungry. This is great. And look at Wincup's car sliding. the intensity on their faces. I spoke to all three before the race meeting started and that's what Larko mentioned before about the chat with the engineers. Interesting in these moments of tension. Got the run, he's got the run. And he'll duck to the right, he's painting to the left and then he'll duck to the right if he can get the draft to work for him but that means that it's a much tighter oh. corner and look at these two, Van Gisbergen and Mostert and if Chaz can get up on the outside, that gives him the ideal line for the left-hander at two. Couldn't get it done, but it was a brave try. He's run wide, Van Gisbergen a little bit. He got back on line for the second apex of turn two. Lowndes has got Wink up out of the comfort zone at the moment, so his car looks better on the restart. Right off the road from inside the top ten. Here's Lowndes again, second, looking up the inside at four. Got him. And Wink Cup's going to give space. I said he was out of the comfort zone with that car. He decided he didn't want to have to drive it ragged. He's let him go. Do you reckon he wants to win this championship? That's one of his best drives. To come from where he was, have the drama at the start of the race, he has come forward. That's an excellent manoeuvre, an absolutely determined professional effort by Craig Lowndes here today. And determination has been the key word for Lowndes. 14 years since he won his last V8 supercar title. We know he's been racking up Bathurst victories in between, but now this championship is so close to him and he will not let it shake. So he puts a move on his teammate, takes the lead of the race with six laps to go, going for maximum points. And he's won more races than any other active driver at this circuit. He's won eight races here and he's got a lock on this one again. There's wisdom in that move, uh, maneuver though for me with, with Win Cup. If you're sliding all over the place, you're more likely to bowl a wide and, and grab a donut off the back of it. Zero points or back in the pack because you had to wobble back onto the racetrack. Much better to just take the pressure off for a moment. He may even find some recovery towards the back end of this, but I think strategically quite a smart play by Wink up there. No, I agree. He knew when Lowndes fired down there, he knew what was on. He could have turned in. He didn't. He held the car wide. He let Lowndes get by. He knows now that he's got to just go and do a really good job for the last part of this race, run second in this race, tweak the car for the next race. 
And I've been really impressed with the level of determination after Lowndes lost four spots in that early manoeuvre with Mostert. He's come back. Obviously, the safety car helped him enormously in terms of getting that gap back, which was, at that stage, a winning gap for Winkup prior to the safety car. He's shown a lot of consistent poise in this regard when you consider a championship win for Winkup in 08, 09, 11 and 12. He missed out to Courtney in 2010. So he puts it together in increments. So it's an interesting thing to watch him do his job. Eats the elephant one bite at a time. The interesting thing about the way this guy goes at Phillip Island, Matt just made reference to his performance at Phillip Island. Watch his technique. The reason that Lowndes goes so well at Phillip Island is not only because he's fast, it's because he looks after the tyres. I said before, this is the hardest place in Australia on tyres. The technique that he uses, the technique, just watch this technique, he turns it in early, brakes the car, turns it to the apex, runs it in on the front wheel, and puts more load on the front of the car then on the rear of the car. So when he does that, he achieves the speed by coaxing the car to the corner, keeping the mid-corner speed up, and then having to accelerate the car less at the end of the corner. So the momentum and the technique is what makes him so good here. But the interesting thing is that you remember he had to fight Mostert and Van Gisbergen. He had to use the car much harder than the leading group, especially Winkup, who did the first 15-odd laps by himself. Yeah, that's a very good point, Matty. He, he did use the tyres and the car hard to make that position up. And as I said before, the safety car, he had a lot of work to do to get the wing cup. He's hustling it, isn't he? On yeah. the gear shift there, second to third, he actually lit it up in the rear because it was sitting on the kerb at the time. And uh, when you do that, you're hurting the tyre a little bit and he's pushing it very hard over the top of the hill. That hurts the front right tyre, which is the working side of the car around here. And his sector splits are impressive. So are wing cups. They're, they're getting on with it here at the moment. Last lap for Lowndes was that quick one. One minute, 32.6. The race is you know, well and truly old now. They're on their 20th lap. Yeah, I, if I was rolling, I'd be saying to both of them at the moment, back it off. You're going to win this race. You've got a big gap. It's got two and a half seconds to Van Gisbergen in third. Well, particularly as we know, there's some tyre stress, stress out there in the universe on this racetrack. There always has been. So 32.5, fastest lap of the race, wind cup. So he's recovered slightly and lost it again, looks down the inside at one and then runs wide because of the tra trajectory into that corner. So it was only a tenth of a second difference between Lowndes and wind cup on that last lap. It's officially three quarters of a second. And here's a move by Will Davison down the inside on David Reynolds. David gave him room there. Yeah, pretty easy move at turn 10. Bottom's a little closer now to the back of these guys, to the back of Alex Davison and Fabian Coulthard. Just a reminder again that that little bit of desperation you saw from Lowndes, it's just rejiggled those provisional points. That was an eight-point gain for Lowndes to pull that move off the difference between points first and second. There's the gap. Three quarters of a second on the last measure. Van Gisbergen in third is 3.2 seconds behind the leader. So these two have pretty much checked out. As Mark said a moment ago, he's not sure about the wisdom of them absolutely driving qualifying laps at the moment. They're doing their fastest laps in the race on lap 21. Both of them, car 888 and 1. So absolutely no let up on the pressure there or here for third spot between Van Gisbergen and Mostert. And your, your point, Neil, is a really good one because that... That pass was a very good pass by Lounge. We said how much that was worth, but it's eight points up, but it's also eight points back. So it's a 16-point differential. Yeah. So the real thing for the championship is a 16-point win there, that manoeuvre. I reckon you guys alluded to it earlier when you wonder why they're doing qualifying laps. They've both looked in their mirrors. Jamie's now had a turn and see these two young blokes behind them cracking on. Uh, that's enough incentive to get on with it. Interesting little dynamic amongst these two is Alex Davidson ahead of Mark Winterbottom. And, you know, they may not be the best of friends, and I'm sure the team would like Mark Winterbottom to be in front of him. But Alex Davidson having a great weekend, and he won't be looking to give up a thing. So let's see what plays out there. That's right. And those of you that follow us all the time may recall quite an awkward moment between those fellows at Pukekohe in New Zealand. Last lap, by the way, for Lowndes was a 1 minute 32.4 a tenth quicker than Wind Cup and the fastest lap of the race. So it continues. So that's three laps in a row where they've got this big arm wrestle going. Peak speed, 
faster than anybody else in the field by a margin. It's out to nearly one second now, Lowndes to win cup, and the gap back to third place Van Gisbergen is 4.2 seconds. So they're actually stretching from leader to third. That margin is opening, and Mostert is not letting go. Yeah, Neil, you're just seeing the praises of Craig Lowndes on tyres. I had a chat to Kev Fitzsimmons, who's the Dunlop tyre manager here, and he was just saying the same thing across the season. It's Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes who are the best on tyres throughout the year. He said the difference in this race, you would hear the instructions for Jamie early on to get out and get on with it, so his tyre's not so good now, whereas Craig was back in the field, conserved a bit of rubber, and now he's getting the advantage. Interesting watching those on board pictures. Thanks, Barrett, of Mostert, who turns in very early. He does it at turn 12, and he does it at 1. It looks encouraging, and it looks like it works for you, but when you turn in early, it makes you slow on the exit to the shape of the corner. So he's really being hurt by that at the moment, and if he... You've got to drive each car to be fully up to speed on its behavioural traits. He might be needing to do that to get the most out of it, but typically, if you can work on your exits when the, the guy you're racing is struggling, that's how you'll actually end up making the pass. Exactly. And he's repeating some of those manoeuvres which are actually hurting him a little bit. He's running down the outside at turn four. What you said before is exactly right. You've got to work out where your positives are, where are the good parts about your car, stay off them enough so that it doesn't have too much aero effect and go and have a lunge, which is really what you saw Lowndes do with the performance at turn four. This will be Craig Lowndes' ninth win at this circuit. It equals you, Scafie, for the most wins at Phillip Island. be his fifth race win of 2013 but in terms of the championship and the way that he had to fight back after a bit of mess at the start this could well be the most important victory for Craig Lowndes this season and it'll be a 1-2 for Red Bull Racing well, mate, Australia. Well win Cup second but he holds on to the championship lead only just Van Gisbergen on the podium. What a drive from Chas Mostert. Fabian Kulpa from pole to fifth. Alex Davison and Mark Winterbottom finishes in seventh. And doesn't that set the scene for this afternoon's second race when Winterbottom and Lowndes will be on the front row of the grid and Wing Cup will start from fifth. Was interesting there in the last lap and a half two laps that battle from van gisbergen to all the way really to will davison which was third to eighth really tightened up yes so those cars went across the line only separated by a couple of seconds okay. it's a very good job in there at techno autosports vip pet foods backing for those guys and a great pace for van gisbergen on the podium and he's been showing some great pace lately right in the thick of it yesterday. He's been going through some more of those numbers on the Lowndes Phillip Island CV. It's just an extraordinary history that he's had here. He's now done 33 races 25 times in the top 10. He has a 75% strike rate in the top 10 and more than 60% strike rate on the podium. And now nine race wins here. And what I always find hard to measure with him is you saw how aggressively he was driving, bagging up in second gear, smashing it into third, sliding the car, but the numbers are still there. Mm, that's right, that's what I say. Well, it's he's, that, that technique, he, he keeps the mid corner speed up. The great thing about him is, and that's just like Brock, he's got great car control. And big, fast, open corners, when the car's on the slide, he keeps the momentum up and he's able to do it lap after lap after lap. So great performance. How's that point scenario you just saw there a moment ago? <laughs> just six points. <laughs> it's tight at the top. <laughs> and remember, Lowndes came into this six points ahead of Jamie. So the tables are turned just a bit. It's like the stock exchange, that championship leaderboard. Frosty's not going to be thrilled, is he? From sort of heading down to the first corner, looking like he could sort of be in the battle. He just couldn't throw a punch in that one. Ended up seventh. Wasn't really much he could do about it. Don't forget, we've got a special one-on-one -on -one interview with Red Bull boss Roland Dane coming up. Also got Touring Car Masters. That'll be fantastic out here. And Jeremy Moore and Lowndes. And the car Triple Eight team celebrate. The smiling assassin is back in business. So 
really good respect there, Matt. And you walk up, shake hands, teammates, both trying to win this championship. Doesn't get any better than that. One of the great racetracks, one of the great battles with two of the very best drivers we've ever seen. Well, Craig Lowndes, uh, boy, only one way to describe that race for you, Lowndes, and that was dogged determination. You wanted that and you wanted it badly. Yeah, I think, Barrett, I think that uh, Largo said that uh, you need to do something special. And, uh, you know, I was very lucky, though, with that safety car because obviously it brought Jamie back to us. Otherwise, uh, you know, we'll probably considering running second but uh, you know of course you never know what these uh, races are like but uh, you know congratulations to all the guys at Red Bull because we've had uh, a bit of a funny morning but uh, it's all turned out now. Oh, you know what the gap in the championship is? Uh, no I have no idea. You're second by six points. Oh wow six points so uh, look you know obviously the next race we've got a much better start hopefully we can capitalize on that but uh, I know he's going to be pretty tough but just a say hello to Levi and Chile at home hopefully bring on round two. Hey great work well done Lansley congratulations. Jamie Wincup, once again, another great team result. You're still leading the championship to six points in it at the moment. This is on. Um, yeah, really happy with my start. Uh, that, that gave us a good opportunity for that race, but I uh, didn't have enough pace. Craig, uh, Craig's thing was lit, and he was driving it really well as well. So um, we, we were good for second, so I'm um, glad to maximise our position. Is that the best run ever into the first turn at Phillip Island, four abreast at the start? It, uh, it was a little hairy. I would have rather been on the inside than the outside, but... Um, didn't really break, just had a big go down the outside and you've got to take those risks to, you know, late in the year to, uh, you know, to try to get right up there. So it paid off, it won't always pay off, but it did today, which is good. Hey, Jamie, you're making this championship so exciting. Well done, it's fantastic. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm not trying to, but that's the way it is. Thank you. <laughs> and Shane Van Gisbergen, after that incredible duel with Chaz Mostert, that was on pretty much all race long. Oh, what a race, but uh, I pushed Chaz all the way down to turn one. We both got good starts from the third row and... Uh, Oh, just crazy. We didn't have the pace, so I, I tried to go with uh, Jamie, but uh, uh, Chaz was over me all race. We had quite a good race, but uh, I had to block him out a bit, but uh, on the podium, I'm stoked. Hey, we all enjoyed watching that race. Enjoy the podium. Good to see you back there, Shane. Yeah, thanks. I'll try not to drink the champagne. we got a race to Savo. <laughs> Mark Winterbottom, uh, 116 behind now in the championship. P7. I know you're not overly happy with that. Contact off the start, mate. That's where it really went all wrong. Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, it's done a bit of detuning to my car I guess so um, you just try and hold on lucky to hold on there but uh, yeah you know it is what it is you uh, fix it now and we're off pole and we'll try and get some points back. Mate there's uh, yeah, a lot of drama happening off the start here you can see there on the overlay mate well you can react to that. Yeah, yeah four into one don't go I guess <laughs> but um, anyway we'll, uh, we're off the right spot in the next one and um, uh, you just got copping on the chin when you get contact like that you're trying to fight hard so um, yeah try and get points back and try and make it go to Sydney, that's the plan. And I guess the positive is, mate, you have got this next race, you're pumped about that, and I just reckon with Sydney, mate, anything can happen at Sydney. Yeah, oh, absolutely, it's not over till it's over, that last lap, but um, yeah, I don't know what my car was then, because uh, obviously that first lap, everything happened, and, and it detunes it, so um, who knows what uh, what the next one is. It was quick and quality, um, obviously the other guys are quick as well, but uh, if we get it right, fix her up, try and get to the front, if we can get it back to 100 points or even, you know, maintain 116, it's uh, still pretty good. Sydney, anything can happen in Sydney, like you said, so um, it's my home ground, I bring a few mates out, sort them out, and uh, a couple of old schoolmates might, might uh, get me over the line. Certainly not getting you out yet, pal, good luck. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Uh, yeah, the good news for Mark Winterbottom is that he will start the next race from pole position, so let's run you through the top 10. Chaz Most at the leading Ford. Good effort from David Reynolds to be inside the top 10 and Garth Tander fighting his way back through after winning yesterday. Not having a good day qualifying wise. Fabian Coulthard, pole position, would finish in fifth. Rick Kelly, the leading Nissan Altima. And Lee Holdsworth, the leading Erebus Motorsport. AMG Mercedes-Benz and DNFs next to Tony D'Alberto's team Highflex and of course Michael Caruso. Car 36. So time for the podium for race 33. Barretts, take it away. Race 33 of our year, the V8 Supercars, Sergeant Security, Phillip Island 360. Would you please congratulate our winner in first place for Red Bull Racing Australia, Craig Lowndes. Our runner-up also from Red Bull Racing Australia, Jamie Wincup. And in third place from Techno Team VIP Pet Foods, Shane Van Gisbergen. <laughs> Representing our winning team, Red Bull Racing Australia, is Jeremy Moore. <laughs> Making the presentation of the third place trophy is the brand ambassador for Sergeant Security, our naming rights sponsor, Paul Morris. 
presenting to second place is the managing director of the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit, Fergus Cameron. Making the presentation to our winning team is Andrew Hutton, commercial director, V8 Supercars. And now making the presentation of the first place trophy, the director of our naming rights sponsor, Sergeant Security, Ben Robert. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 V8 Supercars, Sergeant Security, Phillip Island 360, race 33 winners. So Craig Lowndes started the season with victory in the opening race at the Clipsal 500. He also won, of course, at Barbagello. He won at Hidden Valley in Darwin, won a couple of weeks back on the Gold Coast, and now savors the champagne, or actually passes it aside because he's got another job to do this afternoon. And can you believe it, after 33 races, more than 6,000 kilometres worth of racing in 2013, just six points separates one and two, and just over 100 points back to Mark Winterbottom.